I didn't know how much this was worth, but it looked expensive. As soon as I entered Mr. Dex's dressing room, he shouted, Get out, I said I don't want to be disturbed. I was so shocked that I couldn't keep my blank face. Mr. Dex looked confused. It's you isn't it, get away from me you yellow bastard, he said as he reached for a huge red alarm button, but he was interrupted by Mr. Silton falling from a vent in the ceiling. All right Dex, smirked Mr. Silton. Hello Barry. And it's Mr. Deck if you don't mind, replied Mr. Deck as he hammered on the alarm button. Quick, said Mr. Silton as he turned to me, find a way to stop that alarm. There were four alarms left to turn off. Three alarms left. There were two alarms left.
there was one alarm left. They turned off the alarm. A serious looking security guard walked into the garden set, so I quickly approached him. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I knew I had to keep him out of Mr. Deck's dressing room. I attempted to resume the blank face that Mr. Silton had shown me as I announced that Mr. Deck was not to be disturbed. For some reason I said it in an unusually high-pitched voice, which didn't seem helpful. The security guard's eyes narrowed. Now in a full panic, for some reason I decided this was a good moment to do the finger guns for the first time. The large man shoved me out of the way. But quick as a flash Mr. Logan had appeared and snapped his neck. Sorry, had to be done, was all he said before running back toward Mr. Deck's room. I didn't know you shredded the axe, said Mr. Logan as he placed an acoustic guitar into an ornate sarcophagus. I don't, said Mr. Deck, I got it for Elton John to sign. For once, everyone else looked as confused as I did. We'll take this wine, and this portable TV, said Mr. Preston as he packed the coffin with as many expensive things he could find. These bathrobes are pretty fancy as well. Put those down, said Mr. Deck, Elton John gave me those. What's with you and Elton bloody John, asked Mr. Silton, but Mr. Deck just looked angry. Why are you doing this, he said. There's easier ways to get good wine and cheese. You can't just burst in here and take my stuff. A large smile crept across Mr. Silton's face as he said, Oh, it's not just your stuff we're taking. You try to take me anywhere, said Mr. Deck, and I'll scream this place down. I know people in high places. I'll have you executed, and that little yellow bastard dismantled. My father is the head of the BCT. But Mr. Silton's smile widened as he pulled out a bag full of familiar looking mushrooms. Robot. Take the sarcophagus this way back to the loading bay, said Mr. Silton. We'll climb back through the vents and meet you there.
Mr. Silton was worried that the studio set was quiet. In fact he worried that it was, as he'd put it, too quiet. So, as per usual, it was me that went first.
once away from the studio we were able to duck down a few dark alleyways. I think we're safe, said Mr. Silton, you get dressed and head back to the train now. We'll wait here and travel back later with our cargo. Now departing. The train made its way to Sitcoon. I could get off here to find Alice. Sitcoon, this is Sitcoon. Departing. It looked like I would need a ticket to get through the fairgrounds automatic doors. Now then, said the dirty old man, let's see what you've got. If that's genuine I'll be quids in. This looks interesting. That's a body dazzler. It's a bit now that's something I like this it's a bit but everything else is junk go on then said the younger man stick everything in Bertha Clean even the largest junk in the blink of oh. Restocking on shield orbs Television not included, sir. That cost two thousand. Oh. An addition.
I was surprised to find Alice's house was a lot larger on the inside. And strangely, it lacked any color. Curiously this was a ridiculous amount of stairs for such a small cottage. How strange everything was, I remember wondering if I had been changed in the night. Inside was a beautiful brightly colored field, but there was no way I could fit through such a tiny door. On the table was a large cake. I'd never eaten anything before, but for some reason I felt compelled to have a taste. Suddenly, a large glass bottle appeared. I don't know if it was all the growing that I had been doing, but I felt like I needed a drink.
Thank you. 